In all my excitement in the last video for the Disting NT, my first video for it, you saw that I literally ripped it out of the FedEx guy's hands and screwed it into my rack, turned it on, turned on the camera, and started going. That was a mistake, of course, because you, <laughs> you really should be reading your manual. Read the manual <laughs> in its entirety before you start fiddling with things. I'm honored that expert sleepers themselves came to my little humble channel and did point out, hey dummy, update, update the firmware. So if you're at the main screen like this, you can touch this top left button here and scroll down to MISC and enter in. And there's an about menu here, of course, you can tap that. And now you can see that it's at firmware 1.0.0 because of course that's the day one version that went on the hardware when they got uh, packaged and sent out. Of course you should upgrade your firmware every time you get something new because something might have changed or could have changed and especially when you have little things like I had that little crash that happened which was not a big deal. I knew that it was 1.0. I knew that I rushed to get this in the in the rack to try it out because I was really excited. And the two things I did wrong was one, I didn't read the manual and two, I didn't upgrade the firmware. So now we're, <laughs> we're going to do that today and just take a look at what this looks like. First things first, on the Disting NT page, right at the very top, can't miss it, is the link to the user manual and firmware updates. Let's take a look first at the manual, shall we? So the manual says that the Disting NT's firmware is updated over the USB connection. You will need a computer and the appropriate USB cable to connect the module to the computer. First, let's download all the bits we need to upgrade this firmware, starting with the firmware package itself. And then down here into the methods to update, there is like a GUI tool version and a script version. The script version is for advanced users, I guess, that, that, that know how to use command line, which I do, but I also don't want to putz around with Python <laughs> right now, because I'm sure it's been a, a minute since I've used Python. I'm sure there's 12 new versions. So instead, I'm going to try to use this Expresso Secure Provisioning Tool for Windows, because that's what I'm on right now. I went through the absolute agonizing effort of downloading this MCU Expresso Secure Provisioning Tool, which I hope has nothing to do with expert sleepers themselves, because what a nightmare that was. That was absolutely a nightmare to download this tool. So if you scroll down and find the installer for your operating system and you click the link, you are going to have to make an account, which is unfortunate, but this is the world we live in. So you'll have to first create an account, uh, email address and password. You'll have to go through a number of CAPTCHA verification code <laughs> strangeness just to get in to be able to download this software. Once you jump through all those hoops, your download begins and you save the file on your drive. And then once it is downloaded, it is then time to install it. So like any other Windows program, you just run the installer, tell it where you want it to go and get it installed on your on your desktop. And you can launch the MCU Expresso secure provisioning tool right from the installer to get right into it. And now here we are. We are comparing the actual installed program to the manual so you can see where we're at. So the first thing I think I want to do here is click on this import manufacturing package link and I will go find where I downloaded it to and I will also set up a workspace location where I want to create the, the workspace at. And so now we have the same UI that we see in the in the manual when we're about ready to do the installation. However, there's one more thing I have to do that I forgot to do earlier, and that is actually connect this thing up to USB so this software can speak to Disting NT. So let's do that real quick. All right, so right up here, put the Disting NT into bootloader mode, which you do via the miscellaneous menu. Enter the bootloader mode. Are you sure the module will show you a message? entering serial downloader and appear to hang. So let's do that real quick. Plug that guy in. Listen for the Windows bloop. Let's get this guy into bootloader mode. So again, the main menu, click the top left, 
drill down into a, a miscellaneous and then enter bootloader mode. Are you sure? I am. Let's see what happens. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's all it does is just get into that mode. Okay. Let's go back to the Windows PC. So now it's telling me uh, the connection may, may still be all red. If so, click the auto detect. So let's click auto detect. All right, so we auto detected. We now tested. Everybody seems to be happy. Over way down here in the bottom is the start button to actually perform the firmware, to actually perform the firmware up, update. This should take about 15 seconds and show success. So let's see what that, let's see what happens when we do that. What's the worst that could happen? All right. Turn off the module and turn the module off and back on to resume normal operation. All right, so here we go. We're going to power cycle. I think I can take out my USB plug at this point. Turn it back on. Wait for all the loading to, to finish, and then we'll go check the about screen. All right, we are now on version 1.1.0. So that is no longer the generic <laughs> day one firmware. And, uh, and so maybe this thing won't be crashing anymore. There's probably more stuff that's going to be added every time you do a firmware upgrade because that's what they do. They keep expanding things. And again, super excited about this module because of the fact that it is software driven the way it is. And it already has so much in the way of a user interface. And at this point, Software is going to just keep expanding this more and more and more over the years. And so thank you, Expert Sleepers, once again, for such a fantastic module that is going to be extensible for a very long time. I think that's it. <laughs>